Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 394, Frequently Asked Questions by Women. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. If a woman is considering or has been suggested to her that she consider getting testosterone Mm -hmm. replacement, That's sometimes a new thought to a woman Mm because they think in terms of estrogen, they've always heard Mm -hmm. that. Some of them are surprised they have testosterone issues at all. all. And so then somebody comes along and says, well, maybe you should consider replacing the testosterone Mm -hmm. because you're getting older and your body's not making it. If she is willing to consider that, Mm -hmm. she will have questions. Side effects, what does it do, how does it work, so on. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be beneficial to identify Mm -hmm. some of the more frequently asked questions about why a woman should get testosterone or consider replacing her natural testosterone. And it's important to note that we have all the frequently asked questions on our website and they're listed and there's, there are minimal, not, not extensive answers to these questions, but enough that you understand, you should understand the, the answer to what you're thinking about. So biobalancehealth.com. Go to Frequently Asked Questions, right. and there will be a section for men, a section for women. And we're always updating it when we right. get new questions. So right. so the questions that come in from these health casts and, and from our patients, right. we answer them and then put them into the Frequently Asked Questions. So, so you may see something that you send in to us. You may see the answer written. So one Frequently Asked Question is, what is the difference between estrogen deficiency and testosterone deficiency? I mean, why are we even talking about this? I didn't know I made testosterone or I didn't mm-hmm. think it was a big deal. And I certainly don't want to be like a man. I don't want to have a deep voice. I don't want to have a hairy face. Mm-hmm. I want to get all muscular. You know, why would I consider this? Well, we have three times as much testosterone in our bodies when we're young than we do estradiol. So young women's estrogen. So we have three times as much testosterone, and and for some reason, that gets missed. And they made class. it very simplistic in science class and said testosterone is for men, kind of like men are from Mars. Yeah. So so they've they've completely discounted the fact that we have testosterone, and so because it's the first hormone to go in our forties, and it starts dropping at that point, and it can even become a critical level after forty. Then we get symptomatic, and they say that's premenopause. Premenopause really translates, it has nothing to do with estrogen, it translates to low testosterone. So, all those symptoms they call premenopause are low testosterone. So, it's important that our healthcare givers and our, and people like us don't confuse these things because then patients come in and go, Well, I don't feel better, but my sex life isn't isn't good enough. So I need more estrogen. Or they tell somebody that they get more estrogen, it makes it worse because that's a testosterone thing. So it's important for you to know the symptoms of low testosterone versus low estrogen if you're a female. Okay. So low estrogen is the easiest. It's the shortest list. So low estrogen means hot flashes, dry vagina, painful intercourse, and dry skin, but that, that can also be thyroid. But, but really dry skin and, and hair loss right up in the front, over, over your, um, the front part of your, of your head. So those are the signs of low estrogen. And when we give estradiol back to patients, those things reverse. In general, all of them reverse. So I'm sure it's a thing that women know. But yes. could you Maybe. describe hot flashes? I mean, you're not talking about somebody just, I'm hot, the heat is hot. You're talking no. about the body suddenly surges right and you break out in a sweat and you feel yeah, really hot everybody's it, different okay so so is it more typical it, to happen at night when a you're typical trying to hot sleep? flash comes from the surges of of two hormones that are trying to get your ovary to go they're pushing your ovary so what they do is they keep surging and they surge most at night so those surges give us what 
I was just laughing my, when my wife was going through this. She'd kick the covers off, and I, she'd be soaking wet, and she would glare at me. Yeah, because like you didn't have to deal with this. I had this. done something wrong. <laughs> and I'm laying there all covered up, yeah. sleeping, you know, and, yeah. then, and then I'm awake because, <laughs> because it's dangerous. you're sleeping. You know, yeah, you're sleeping, because and I'm she's sleeping. not. Exactly. So she has to wake you up. Oh, she hated That's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, hot flashes can be typical where it's exactly what you described. Right. Or you can just get a red face, or you can just sweat. And some people have them all day long or every five seconds. Those people usually come to me because they're desperate not to have those. And most of the time, if you take an oral estrogen or if you take a a sublingual estrogen or one of the other estrogens that are a daily use, it doesn't get rid of all of them. That's that's the catch. doesn't get rid of all of them. And it doesn't take away all the symptoms. That's why I use pellets. It's just not strong enough. It's not, it's not, they don't dose it. They don't dose it high enough. Okay. And, and it, it wears out every day and it'll wear, you usually take it in the morning and it's gone by at night. And so then you're hot flashing at night. So that whole circadian rhythm thing kicks in. Right. And it makes you functional during the day. Right. But because you're taking your medicine, it's highest dose during the day and then it's wearing off when you really need it. Okay. I guess you could switch it to take it at night. Is the same thing happen then with testosterone? If you use a, a cream or a gel yes. or something, yeah, they la- they last less than twenty four hours. Okay. Usually, you have to dose them twice a day, which no one no one does, or you have to, uh, or more often. But if you dose it once a day, then you don't have it for some period of time during that day, okay. and that's why pellets are good because they last for four months, so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, I know that you're not missing dosages, so your symptoms aren't from Lack of dosing. So you identified the the symptoms that a woman would present with if she was having an estrogen deficiency. Right. Mm-hmm. What would she be saying to you or concerned about mm-hmm. if she was having a testosterone deficiency? So most women are either most concerned about sex or they're most concerned about their body their body changing. Se- sexuality, feeling sexual, feeling like a like a sexy desire, person libido. and having desire for your loved one is all in the chemicals in your head that are run by testosterone, not estrogen. I'm so tired of other, I mean, like general OBGYNs telling people it's estrogen because it's not, it makes it worse. And then they think, well, I'm never going to have a sex life again. So it's so testosterone. Sad. I know yeah. it is so sad. So testosterone gives you back the desire to have sex, the, the, um, the, Actually, the love for your love object, they look a lot more important to you. You care about them more because on testosterone, we care about the person that we're bonded with. Without it, we go, eh, we don't need you. See you later. I mean, it's it really is something yeah. that's that has been told to me over and over again. And I've experienced it myself. When no testosterone, you don't, I don't need anybody. You're right. ready to you're ready to get old and die. Yeah. So you so that's kind of a, a low testosterone symptom. Then every so everything to do with sex, orgasms, you need testosterone. So you know, I, I had conversations with a number of women that would come in and say, "I'm anorgasmic. I, I do not know that mm-hmm. I've ever had an orgasm." Mm-hmm. And one of the potential explanations for that is sexual trauma right. as a child. Uh, so we pursue that, and, and conversationally, and, and people say, "Well, no, I don't remember that. I don't know that it was ever in my life." I did not know that at, at that time that testosterone deficiency could create a situation where a woman can never have enough stimulation to reach a point of release Mm -hmm. that we call orgasm. Mm -hmm. You've had, or what you tell me, Mm -hmm. you've had any number of women that have come in who present as anorgasmic. Primary anorgasmia is lifetime anorgasmia. Lifetime. And then with the proper dosage of testosterone replacement, they come in and they have this smile on their face and they're mm-hmm. excited and that mm-hmm. something has happened that's never happened before. Right. And that is they've had an orgasm. Right. And they're like, that's what everybody was talking about. Yeah. But they probably during their whole lives didn't eat. We all make a different level of testosterone and, and we all have a different level of receiving testosterone. Our receptor sites are all genetically, are genetically programmed, programmed so that the same dose is going to look different on, on a different person. So in, in any case. Different size, different shape. Yeah, different but age, also yeah. different receptors. Yeah. So so I have to, that's the one unknown when I'm dealing with dosage. But, okay. but when uh, women come in, I could have two women I give the same amount of testosterone to, and one's going to be 
get a lot out of it and another person isn't. They're resistant. So people who have been anorgasmic probably had a lifetime of not making enough right. testosterone or not receiving it, not being sensitive to it. So we have to overwhelm. So can you tell if it's a production or a receptor site issue? The only way I can tell is by increasing dosage uh -huh. and finally getting the response. That's a receptor site okay. problem. All right. We have to flood the receptor sites. Uh -huh. So, but but that does fix primary an anorgasmia. But secondary means all of a sudden you were fine, and then all of a sudden your testosterone dropped, which made your oxytocin drop, and which made a whole bunch of other things in your brain neurotransmitters that have to do with orgasm drop. And now you can't have an orgasm. And that's even more frustrating just because yes. you had it and now you don't have it. Yeah, you know what the payoff is supposed to be and you know when, under what circumstances to expect it. And you're straining for it and it's not happening. And it ruins marriages and, and partnerships. And relationships. And, and relationships. It's I take it personally. terrible. You don't love me anymore. You right. don't like me anymore. You must be interested in the mailman. Because you're not interested in me. <laughs> or you must not be interested. <laughs> yeah. Or you must and not. Yeah. I can't what take that the wrong? rest of my life. Yes, exactly. You know, so we have we have those situations where patients come in with their their spouse or partner and they're like this is it you fix her or else wow. and I, that's a lot of pressure <laughs> we have a so, committee that comes in the divorce lawyer the minister I <laughs> no i just play those parts yeah but uh but we're our goal is to keep people together if they have a good had a good relationship sure. before this so we try to get them back to normal so so anything to do with sex that's testosterone. So the other things, your your body image, we lose our we lose our waistline. Now it's not good to, when you have babies; you lose your waistline a little bit anyway. But then you can come back by exercising. But when you lose testosterone, your belly gets big, and you can't come back. It is not possible to get back to that same shape without a lot of help. Right. And the longer it goes, the harder it is to get back. So we give testosterone exercise, diet, and we use some lasers to help help them kickstart it. But we get people back. Right. And then their muscle mass comes back. And so you can see definition in their arms, definition yes. in their legs. They get their body back to where it used to be or even better. And they're ecstatic because they look younger. They feel younger. The muscles in their face are mu much better. They have a, a better kind of expression they have more expression it's it really it's is amazing to see amazing to see the well, difference you know what you're looking at it's amazing to see but talking about belly fat brings me to a, another question america is in the middle of an obesity epidemic mm -hmm. that is leading to an epidemic of diabetes yes so if i am pre-diabetic or diabetic and even on insulin and i come to you and say would testosterone replacement play any role in this at all? Uh, it does. What is your answer? <laughs> what are you going to tell it me? It does. In type 1 diabetes, it's not as helpful. But Type 1 is what we also one, call juvenile diabetes? Yes. Is we, that's, the, that's the one you've had since you were a child. It's a different source. It's a different – it's not genetically predisposed like uh, type 2, which is the old people diabetes when you get fat. Type 1 people are usually fairly thin. So weight loss for them is not going to help. But insulin sensitivity is. And in diabetes, what happens first is you start gaining weight, you become insulin insensitive. The insulin carries, the, carries blood sugar into your cell and makes energy. If you're insulin insensitive, it bounces off your cells and makes fat. So every time you eat, you're making more fat right. and you're tired. So even if you have type 1, and I, I had a friend that I treated – a while back, and her doctor wasn't happy because she was on insulin. I put her on metformin and testosterone, and she got better, and she started losing weight. And he was so angry, but she was successful. So was she able to come off the insulin? Did no, she lose enough? She's, she was she was uh, she was different. She was a mixture of type but, one. But that and can two. happen. I mean, yes. it is possible yes. to come off of. It's possible if you have type one diabetes. It's not possible, it's not possible. to come off insulin. Right. But if you are on insulin for type two and you lose enough weight and you become insulin sensitive. Then it could, it is possible, but it's easier. There's a window. But you can lose, yeah. but it's hard to lose weight when you have diabetes because you're It's insulin, hard to lose weight, period. You're insulin resistant. So when we make you insulin sensitive with testosterone right. and with, met, we add metformin, you start losing weight, you start having more energy, your body works like it was meant to work. And, and honestly, you can become insulin insensitive right. or insulin resistant 
just by getting fat enough. So the country's full of insulin insensitive people. Right. Right. So even if they were young and made testosterone, they'd still be having trouble losing weight. We would have to give them metformin and a diet and exercise. America's become sedentary. We sit, we sit in a room. We're afraid somebody's going to come take our kids. So we lock our kids in in the house. They don't go out and play anymore. We're, we're that's a problem, and that's what one of the problems. Plus, the food is right junk food. Absolutely. But we can help with this if you're an adult and you want to get better and you want to see if this helps you lose weight and get your body back, we can help with testosterone and, and whatever else you need to manage your, um, your insulin insensitivity or insulin diabet diabetic. So one last question for today. Mm -hmm. That's a frequently asked question mm -hmm. by women when they come to see mm -hmm. you and say, is this appropriate for me as a treatment is they, they talk to you about she's normally I would see a psychiatrist or counselor for this, mm -hmm. but I'm suffering mm -hmm. from depression attacks uh, and, and anxiety attacks, if I got testosterone replacement, would that help me? So this is a qualified answer. Yes. If you've had, if you've had depression or anxiety your whole life, it probably is not going to remove all of it. You're probably still going to need medication. But. And, and or treatment. And or, and, and therapy, counseling. Right. Yeah. However, if you became anxious or depressed at 40 and over, then it's very possible it happened because your testosterone dropped and then everything got worse. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard to get out of that depression with just antidepressants. Right. So in those cases, we do very well. We do a great job of making people's moods less depressed and people less anxious. But not the lifetime depression, and we don't, and it does not help bipolar, manic depression, schizophrenia, no, but or you know, any one of, of those to other think illnesses. About it, it doesn't have any effect on that. It's not uncommon to have anxiety or depression when there are major life changes. If you come to the end of a stage in your life, you're graduating from college, you're retiring from a job, you've just gotten a divorce, you're just going to get married, buy a house. There are so many things that can happen that can trigger chemical changes in your system and emotional changes in, in your responsiveness. If you follow traditional medicine, they'll put you on some kind of antidepressant, which has some side effects. They have to discover which one. There are so many different ones. It takes works a while. best for you. Mm -hmm. It's expensive as a process. One of the benefits of testosterone replacement as a therapy globally is that so many of the people that come in and get it have to go to fewer doctor's visits, fewer therapist mm -hmm. visits, have to spend mm -hmm. less money on medications because the improvement biochemically, hormonally, from the testosterone and the estrogen and the thyroid, mm -hmm. when you get your hormones in balance, yeah. so many of the other parts of your body work better that you can not spend all that money chasing a rainbow. Yeah, or taking tons of drugs that, I mean, you can take testosterone and you may not need the other the medications. The anti-anxiety, absolutely. And so it's, it's worth a conversation with your doctor if your doctor is knowledgeable about hormone replacement and if they're knowledgeable about depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But don't just give up and don't just suffer. And and don't don't give up counseling because that's always also important to actually I would say that get better but I'm not you are but yeah because I tell my patients yeah. to still get counseling until they're completely better yeah or they resolve their issues which is never everybody needs a doctor a lawyer and a on counselor retainer. just yeah. Yeah, on retainer <laughs> because life is complicated and and this and we're trying to uncomplicate it just a little bit yes thank you thank you Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.